Welcome to k and Football. If you didn't know, we're a football podcast and we talk about the NFL. We were introducing ourselves because, you know, we clearly upload all the time. It's actually been so long since we've uploaded last. Uh, life is super busy, but we are hoping to try to get on a regular schedule. We say that and then next week we're going to end up not recording. But for this week, at least, we have a recap. We're recapping week nine, I believe this was. So sit back and enjoy. This is k and Football. And it's been a long time. So, football aside, how how is how's Austin doing? I know a lot of people who listen don't get to see Austin on a on a daily basis right now. So, how's Austin doing? Doing pretty good. Uh, no complaints. Only thing that could be better is the Browns could have a better record. But <laughs> I said football aside. I know football aside, but that really pertains. Um. Yeah. No complaints. Ready for Thanksgiving break. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. How's uh, how's Caden doing? I don't Caden? Get to see you on a regular basis. Well, everybody, most people who listen to this do get to see me on a regular basis. But Caden's li- Caden's chugging. He's living. I'm living my best life. Panthers, you know, make life a little miserable. But aside from that, life is good. Um, so without further ado, just want to jump into last week's games. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. Uh, so last Thursday night it was Tennessee p- at Pittsburgh. Will Levis was coming off of his incredible four touchdown debut, where he just lobbed the ball up to D Hop every single time and just hoped for the best, which happened to work. But it didn't work this week. Pittsburgh won twenty to sixteen. Will Levis didn't play terrible. Uh, he played serviceable. He actually today was announced that he's going to be the starter for the rest of the season. So clearly. The Titans like what they see out of him, but Pittsburgh, they kind of just, they win the ugliest football games. They just, they muck things up and yeah. find a way to win. And I know it makes a lot of Browns fans mad. It makes my dad super upset, but right now, though, as it stands, all four AFC North teams would be in the playoffs, which is wild to think. I mean, it's not going to remain yeah. that way because they all still have to play each other many times, but it's that's crazy at this point in the season. I mean, I think that Every, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that every AFC North team has at least played each other one time. Um, and we're coming back around, like the Browns will play the Ravens this week. So we're coming back around to where we'll come through that final swoop where they play each other again. So I honestly, like, as improbable as it sounds, there's actually a really good chance. I think that all AFC North teams make the playoffs if they continue at this trajectory. Um, which is kind of wild, but like I've been saying it for like a year now, AFC North is the best division in football. Everyone who was saying AFC West is just wrong. AFC North is for sure it, but you're absolutely right. Steelers win like the absolutely ugliest games. Like they, their offense is non-existent. I don't know how they actually put points on the board. I think it's like their defense is carrying them, kicking and screaming across the finish line. They really don't want to win games, but TJ Watt single-handedly puts the team across the finish line. Um, They've been outscored like every game. They have a negative point differential. They have been outgained in yards every single game. And yet somehow they're five and three, which is really annoying because they should have lost a lot more games. 2016 with Will Levis throwing for almost 300 yards and Kenny Pickett barely breaking 150 should not be allowed. It makes no sense, but, uh, George Pickens in this game did terrible, and I don't know. Did you see all the stuff on on social media about him? I did actually. <laughs> it's crazy. You, I mean, I didn't see a whole bunch. I think I did, but George Pickens finished with negative one yards receiving on mm-hmm. two receptions, which is awesome. But I did see some like some like cryptic tweet or something where he's like free me. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But then he came back like a day later and said that it's not football related. Like, mm, that doesn't make much sense. But No one believes you, buddy. <laughs> but, yeah, nothing else much about that game. It was kind of boring of a game. Pittsburgh won. Uh, then we moved to Germany. The Chiefs coming off of their loss to the Broncos. 
which you had to go back like years to hear somebody say that. But the Chiefs losing last week to the Broncos. Uh, they go here to Germany. They play Miami, who Miami, we all know, is dominant when they play bad teams. But when they play a good team, they completely poop the bed. And that's kind of what it looked like was happening in this game. The Chiefs jumped out to a 21 nothing lead. Tyreek Hale fumbled, resulting in a scoop and score for the Chiefs. I mean, it was going all Kansas City's way. But then slowly in the second half, Miami started coming back. They made it a seven-point game, and Tua had one final drive. They got to about the 30-ish yard line. Tua had a wide-open dude on third and third and 10, I believe, with like 20 seconds to go. Dude, it was one of the – did you see the pass? I did. Have you seen that? Like, it it yeah, was bad. It was literally like that pass that Tua threw to end the game. I mean, it was literally everything that Tua haters have been saying. Like, Tua cannot help himself. Like, he plays a couple of good games. Everyone's like, oh, I guess Tua's kind of legit. And then he throws a pass like that, and everyone's like, oh, remember when we were saying Tua doesn't have an arm? Yeah. Back. Yeah, it was – I don't know what happened on that play, but completely – I mean, that was the game time touchdown right there. And then they had one more play on fourth and ten, and Tua just drops a snap. So Dolphins, they look dominant some weeks, and then they play a real team. And then they look like crap. So it's hard to say that the Dolphins are legit. It's hard to be scared of the Dolphins if you're a good team. Um, like they they struggle when they play any kind of team with a winning record or close to it. Yeah, but even despite that, like even though they played really terrible against good teams, like they're going to win the division. Like at this at this rate, like the Bills are not doing anything. Right. The Patriots are obviously two and seven. That's not doing anything. And then, I mean, there's the Jets. Like, they could squeeze in, I guess, but not really. They're not going to do better than the Bills. So, Dolphins are probably going to take the division. They're probably going to make the playoffs. And that's honestly probably about as far as they're going to get. I don't think they really stand a chance to be, like, Super Bowl winners this year with the way that they play against actual teams. Um, but I think that what's more concerning for most people is the fact that it, like, the Chiefs' offense is not what's winning them games. You know, like for like the last couple of years, it's been like, oh, the Chiefs win games because they have Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. And then they traded away Tyreek Hill, and everyone's like, Marley is still going to be good. And they won a Super Bowl with Walmart employees at receiver. And it's like, oh, I get their offense just still carried them because it's Patrick Mahomes and Walmart employees. And then now everyone's like, oh, well, you know, their offense kind of sucks and they can't really score, but their defense is the one that's like dragging them, kicking and screaming across the finish line the same way as the Steelers. So I think that's what, that's probably really concerning for like every other team in the NFL. Because it's like, you know that at some point, like expect when playoffs come around and the Chiefs, no matter what, will win their division because the AFC West kind of sucks right now. The Chiefs will make the playoffs. And when they do, uh, you're going to get playoff Mahomes. And you don't want to play playoff Mahomes. Because he turns Walmart employees into a team of Randy Mosses. And if the Chiefs defense continues playing the way they are, you're not winning. The Chiefs are just going to win another Super Bowl. Congratulations, everyone. Um, so I think that's probably the most concerning thing to see out of these, last, or these first nine weeks is that the Chiefs defense is actually really, really legit. And their offense will pick up eventually. Mm -hmm. Totally agree there. I mean, their defense come. It's kind of carried them this, this first half of the season. Mahomes does not look himself. But like you said, once they get to the playoffs, because they are going to go, they're obviously not missing the playoffs. But when they do go to the playoffs, Mahomes is going to be normal Mahomes, which, like you said, is very scary. Um. All right. So this next game, you want to talk about this one? It's your your uh, your boys, Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. Baltimore and Seattle. Yeah. Um. Baltimore and Seattle. Look, I didn't. I don't think anyone really expected the Seahawks to win this one, but I think we all expected them to do a little bit better than 37 to three. Like, a little bit. I don't know, man. Like the Browns didn't lose that bad to the Ravens. The Seahawks beat the Browns. So I think everyone kind of figured that, okay, I'm an opponent there. Seahawks are probably, they're going to put up a fight, but no one thinks they're going to win. And then they, and they, 37 to three is an embarrassing loss. Um, I don't, I don't like the Ravens. I really don't. I like we, we went into the season and everyone's like, Oh, you know, Ravens are probably going to be good. I guess like, I don't know, probably the best team in the AFC, 
AFC North, like this field here. It's probably the best team. And then they got hurt. Like Odell's hurt. J.K. Dobbins is hurt. Um, it's just like, okay, I guess it's probably not going to be the same team. And they're like, they did not skip a strike. So it's kind of annoying to see that Lamar Jackson is kind of like single-handedly carrying this team to victory. Him and Zay Flowers are just like destroying teams left and right. I'm not too, too worried though, because we're almost at that point of the season, probably two, three weeks now where Lamar Jackson will get hurt for the rest of the year. So we at least have that look for, to look forward to. We're going to get a nice couple of weeks of Tyler Huntley and then um, playoff Tyler Huntley. So, I mean, we at least have that to look forward to, but for now it's just really annoying. I think right now the Ravens look like one of, if not, I could argue like the best team in the NFL. I mean, you got I not the best sure record. Put them in top three. Yeah, I would say top two. A lot of people are probably going to say the Eagles because the Eagles technically have the best record. But the Eagles, I mean, a lot of their games have been ugly. Like they barely squeaking some of them off. And the Eagles are getting bailed on so many calls by the refs. Sure. The Ravens, if you really look at it, the Ravens could full full well be undefeated right now. They lost the Colts game off of the most awful pass interference call I've ever seen, or non-pass interference, I forget how it ended, but it was, like, mind-boggling, which you shouldn't be in a game against the Colts like that anyway, but they shouldn't have lost that game off of a horrible call like that. So that's one of their losses. And then their other their other loss, if their receivers had any resemblance of hands that game, they beat the Steelers. They had, like, eight drops for, like, a potential of, like, 200 yards or something crazy like that. So if you take those two things out, they're undefeated right now. And even with those two, I think Lamar right now, he's not like lighting it up. Like maybe the greatest, like, like we would maybe hope an MVP would have, but there's no quarterback this year. That's like, wow, this guy is having the most greatest year ever right now at the halfway point of the year. I think Lamar Jackson deserves the MVP at this point in the season. Yeah, I, I can see that argument being. I'm here. I hear a lot of talk about Tua. I hear a lot of talk about Jalen Hurts. I hear a bunch of stuff, but I don't hear much about Lamar. But I, I think that he's been the best quarterback so far this season, and he's, he's. I mean, thirty-seven to three against Seattle. What it, what was it the other week against Detroit? I mean, he's just killing these teams. Last week against the Cardinals. I mean, granted, it is the Cardinals, but he put up a ton of points. The defense gave up a, a thousand points as well, but he put up a thousand points as well. So I just think. The Ravens look really good, and if he can stay healthy, I think they're scary. I agree with that. I completely agree there, and it's annoying because they're in our division, but um, hopefully they'll get a couple losses here and there. Hopefully the Browns beat them this week. I don't think it'll happen. Hopefully the Bengals can beat them, and then hopefully the Steelers are not going to squeak out another one against them. But, yeah, I for sure think they're one of the best teams. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, then my team here. Um, I'll talk about this one just really briefly. Not a whole lot to go off of here. Um, we should have won by more. Let's start there. We did win 27 nothing. That was our first shutout since, I want to say 2007. The Browns' first shutout since 2007. So it's been a quick second since we had a good defense, and now we have statistically the best defense in 50 years. So, like across all of NFL. So that's pretty awesome. Um, and despite that, we are winning games in, in spite of that. Like, we're doing our absolute best to lose games on offense. Like, let's be real here. Our offense is really not all that great. Deshaun Watson, um, I'm just thankful for every day that goes by because that means we owe him a little less money. Um, it's, just, it's, a, it's annoying. Like, I'm glad to see that he's back because he's better than P.J. Walker. That's for sure. But at the same time, it's like, I would rather Baker Mayfield um, never thought that I'd say that again in my life, but I would rather make a Mayfield at this point. So it's just really annoying because it's like, okay, our quarterback situation, not what we want it to be. Our running back situation, while it is strong, is not what we want it to be. Our receiving core is awesome, but we don't have anyone to get the ball to them. And then our defense is just lights out. So it's literally just Miles Garrett and Denzel Ward just, again, dragging us across games. Being like, okay, guys, we're going to win. We got this. We're going to win games. And then our offense doing their best to try to make us lose. So as long as we keep doing that, I mean, we'll be fine. Um, we make the playoffs at this point. But we should have won by more against the Cardinals. But what can you do? A win's a win in this division. That's all you can really ask for. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, every, like we said earlier, every team in that division is in the playoffs as of right now, which is crazy. So, yeah, we'll move on to the next game, which was wild. Um, Tampa Bay versus Houston. Houston coming off the loss to the Panthers, which, I mean, that's a pretty bad look for Houston, not going to lie. Um, <laughs> but uh, they go into this. CJ's lighting it up. Baker's playing very good himself. Uh, the Bucks ultimately end up t- getting a go-ahead touchdown with 46, 47 seconds to go. And the Texans have the ball down by four, I believe. Uh, yeah, down by four with 46 seconds to go. CJ goes. CJ throws past here, throws past here. They get all the way down to about the 15, 20-yard line. Then with, I think, 10 seconds to go in the game, he throws he throws a touchdown pass to Tank Dell, and the Texans win 39-37. An absolute shootout, a very, very entertaining game. And C.J. Stroud breaks the uh, NFL rookie record for most passing yards in a game with 470 yards. He threw five touchdowns in this game. He really lit it up. Um, I mean, you will talk about it, I'm sure, in a little bit. But he looks really good. And he, the Texans look like they have their QB of the future, for sure. Yeah, it really looks that way. Um, I mean, like you said, 470 yards. He had like 300 of those in the second half. So that's kind of crazy. Um, absolute shootout between two quarterbacks that I and two teams, really, that you really wouldn't expect. I mean, Buccaneers and Texans, if you would have told me at the beginning of the year that that was going to be one of the most entertaining games of week nine, I would not mm-hmm. Um yeah, CJ Stroud looks awesome. I'll be one of the first to tell you that I did not like him in college. Um, he was yeah. a state's quarterback. I was not a big <laughs> me, fan of me him. Me too. Me and you um, both. We we were not fans. Did not like him as a quarterback, but for some reason, um, he's he's a different animal in the NFL. Like he just looks good, um, especially like these last couple of weeks, like getting probably just getting comfortable in the game. I mean, we have to say that the Buccaneers defense is not the best defense in the world. So there is that, but still 470 yards. No one's done that against him yet. Um, really impressive overall. Definitely looking like he'll be the future. Um, all he has to do is stay clear of any uh, massage parlors. And yeah, yeah. E2, E2 can be a great Texans quarterback. <laughs> Go for it. Maybe if he does, it'll end up in Cleveland. Hey, if he ends up in Cleveland, at this point, I would not be mad, but we're being real here. <laughs> I'll probably be trash there too. <sighs> All right. We'll move on to the next game. New Orleans versus Chicago. Tyson Bajant in his third start, and he still sucks. Uh, the Bears had so many opportunities to win this game. Derek Carr sucks. He threw, he was he was not playing well against the Bears, and the Bears aren't even a good team, but New Orleans won this one 24-17. Tyson Bajan threw, hold on, I'm going to look at the back score real quick because I was watching this game, obviously rooting against the Saints, and Bajan was making me pretty upset. Here we go, 220 yards, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but three interceptions for this Tyson Bajan dude. Uh, he had a quarterback rating of 65, um, but like he was given the ball and prime position. It's not like he was just doing, like, he had nothing on game. He has DJ Moore. He has Cole Komet. He has Darnell Mooney. I mean, and he couldn't get it to go. His O-line was giving him time. He was just throwing picks. Some of his reads he was making, I was like, are you kidding me, Tyson Bajit? But, you know what? That's what you get for being a Division II quarterback, so you can't really fault him too much, but I will say... I'm really, really, really hoping that he plays this Thursday because the Bears have a Thursday night game this week, and it's the battle of maybe the two worst teams in football, minus like the Cardinals and the Giants. Panthers and Bears play Thursday night, if you didn't know. I know. What a, what an amazing ratings. What, look, that game, the ratings going to break some records, I guarantee you. Um, I'll tell you, man, I think the NFL just hates Amazon, and <laughs> you cannot change my mind about that. They have set I mean, up some if of the you worst really, If you think about games. it, before the season started – when they scheduled this, it looks like a good game. Because everyone thought the Bears were going to be really improved with Justin Fields and all of that. Everyone thought the Panthers were going to be serviceable, not this bad. Um, and it's a DJ Moore revenge game. It's Deontay Foreman revenge game. We traded up with the Bears to get Bryce. It looks like a big game, and they just both ended up sucking. So 
I'm really hoping they start Bajant because that would make it a lot easier for us and we need all the help we can get. So, but yeah, Bears aren't very good, but neither are the Saints. But somebody's going to have to win the NFC South, which is so sad. It's going to be the Saints, let's be real here. Um, yeah, not really too much to comment on here. I mean, Tyson Bajant definitely doing the best he can. I mean, he was a Division II quarterback. So, I mean, you really can't ask for him to do anything spectacular, but I feel like for a Division II quarterback, it was not drafted, obviously. Doing really, really well. Like you can't fault the guy for anything. Like you can you can dog at him all you want because he's not good. Nah, he not sucks. Caliber, he like, sucks. But yeah, he, he's bad, but like he's division two. Like there are division one quarterbacks that have way more like that played at like big schools that do worse than he's doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't think you can fault the guy. Like he's doing the best he can. Um trying to I mean, I think Right now, he's doing a really good job of showing everyone in the NFL, like, hey, you need a backup. I might not be the best, but I can I can certainly throw the ball around the yard. Hey, you guess what, Badgett? Yards in- hey, Bajan, if, if if they let you start on Thursday night, you're really going to boost your resume. Let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> that. You're guaranteed, like, six touchdowns against us. So, all right. So true. Minnesota and Atlanta. Absolutely Wild game, okay. Obviously, Kirk Cousins tears his ace or tears his Achilles last week, so they went went ahead on Tuesday and traded for the rocket scientist himself, Josh Dobbs. Um, and obviously, Josh Dobbs just getting there on Tuesday, getting traded on Tuesday, probably didn't get there until Wednesday. He knows nothing in the playbook. He knows no plays. So obviously he's not going to play this week. They had him slotted in as a backup just in case something crazy were to happen. He doesn't know the plays. He doesn't even know his receivers names, his offensive linemen's names. Uh, So they're going to this game with Darren Hall, some rookie as their quarterback. And Atlanta is also going to this game with Taylor Heineke, which as a Panthers fan, that, that, yeah, that as a Panthers fan that upset me because Heineke is a lot better than Desmond Ritter. So I was like, dang, I mean, Falcons are kind of being smart. But um, so it starts off and Falcons go down and score. Vikings get all the way down. And then the Vikings are running. Uh, Darren Hall is running for the end zone. He gets, I don't know how he, they, he didn't get an inch, but he got tackled at like the one inch line and he hits his head pretty hard. And you could tell that he's done. Like he ends up getting a concussion. So it shows Josh Dobbs on the sideline. He's warming up. He's getting ready to come in, and the dude knows no plays. Like he was on the sideline before the next drive, talking to his offensive line so they could know his cadence, so that they wouldn't jump off sides every single snap, which is wild. And he goes and has a phenomenal game. Leads a comeback. It's a game, man. He he he's crazy. Um, they were down on the last drive. He leads a come from behind fourth quarter game-winning drive to beat the Falcons 31-28. This, like, it, I don't have words. I mean, good for Josh Dobbs. And he's definitely the, slot, the starter for the rest of the year for the Vikings. And the Vikings right yeah. now find themselves in the playoffs. If the playoffs started right now. I mean, they're not going to win the Super Bowl. But for everyone who thought this season was over, like after week three when they were 0-3, and then they started to gain, gain a little momentum, uh, and then Kirk gets hurt, and they're like, okay, we're definitely done. No, Josh Dobbs is clearly him. And now uh, Justin Jefferson's probably going to want to come back soon. He's like, okay, we are playing for something now. We're a good team again. So yeah. congrats it's, to the Vikings, and good for Josh Dobbs. That was awesome. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, like like you said, probably gets in on Wednesday. Did not take any first-team reps. I mean, the Vikings were fully committed that Jaron Hall was going to be their quarterback one this week. I totally understand. Oh, it was like, Jaron. I thought it was Darren. No, You're Jaren. right. It is Jaron. What the heck? <laughs> um, so they were like, oh, yeah, Jaron Hall's the guy. Like, don't worry about it. Like, you'll, maybe you'll get some second team reps. And it is what it is. Jaron Hall's going to start this week. We get it. Kurt got hurt. All right. Uh, then he comes in and I think he, he said after the game that like, it was like, if you study all year for your German exam and then you walk into the exam and realize it's a French exam, like that's what it was like hearing uh, Kevin O'Connell talk to him in the headset. Like, this is the play. This is the play we're going to run, Josh. And then Josh would obviously have to tell um, the entire team. The, the team knows the play. The team understand yeah. what, what the words mean, but he doesn't understand what the words mean. 
So then Kevin O'Connell is having to like tell him like what the play actually means, like regular football terms that he can understand. So, I mean, it's just really, really impressive. I mean, it, I mean, it gives off uh, Baker, Baker Mayfield going to play for the Rams. Yeah, one it does. day after being signed, kind of vibes. Absolutely. Uh, it's just overall really, really impressive. Um, and I have him in fantasy. He was my pickup after Aaron Rodgers got hurt. And he has been so, so good for me. Like, he honestly deserves a starting spot after this. Yeah, he plays. He plays. And, I will and say he's that. doing I, all of this. I said that about Jacoby Brissett last year. I'll say, I'll say that about Yeah, Jackson. he's doing all of this, too, with no preparation. He got traded to the Cardinals like two weeks before the year. So he had no time to learn anything for the Cardinals. Yeah. He had no time to learn anything for the Vikings. And he's performing very well. Give him a full offseason. He's not going to be no franchise quarterback, but he's very serviceable. For sure. Like he's for sure a placeholder quarterback. He's a, he's a journeyman. Let's be yep. clear. He's a journeyman quarterback, but he, I mean, he deserves some starting jobs. Like It's not just uh, our guys hurt, bring him in. It's like, oh, he deserves to be your guy going into the year. Mm-hmm. Stand by that for any team that's looking for a quick rebuild. Um, enough of that game. I did not, this next game here, I did not expect this at all. Um, Rams at Packers. Did not, did not see that. I mean, really thought that Rams were going to kind of mop the floor with them, but then it didn't happen. Um, Matt Stafford didn't play. Uh, Jordan Love threw for almost 300 yards. And Aaron Jones finally kind of came back yeah. a little bit. So, I mean, 20 to 3, nothing to sneeze at there. But they did win. Um, Packers falling off. Lions are taking the division, and you cannot change the line of that. Oh, absolutely. And the Packers have totally fallen off. I was a little surprised they won this game, but like you said, Matthew Stafford didn't play in this game. I don't even know who the Rams quarterback was, uh, but clearly uh, he wasn't good. Right, right then. Never heard of right, right then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That tells you all you need to know. Uh, clearly he wasn't very good because the Rams went out today and signed Carson Wentz. Boom. Mm-hmm. That tells you what you need yeah. to know about, you know about how the situation's going. Signed Carson Wentz. Mm-hmm. So if you have Puka Nakua or Cooper Cup in your fantasy league, I'm sorry. You're done. <laughs> Goodbye to championship aspirations. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one of the more impressive things that I've seen recently is uh, the sex game here, the football team playing Patriots. Um, Sam Howell is second in passing. Yards no. in the entire league? Passing yards. He's second in the entire league. Really? Behind only Tua. Yep, he's second. Never would have guessed that in about 100,000 years. He could have given me all 32 NFL quarterbacks, and I probably would have listed... Um, what's his name? I'm blanking on his name now. Um, Colin Kaepernick. I don't know. I probably would have listed him before uh, Sam Howell. Um, really impressive. Um, they ended up beating the Patriots, and for some reason, things like uh, they've been beating the Patriots twenty to seventeen, despite the referees forgetting that Tom Brady does not play for the Patriots anymore, and so that roughing the passer call did not. Be but that's fine. They ended up winning anyways, barely squeaking it out. And even though the football team probably won't be making the playoffs, and they're not going to come close to winning their division because the Cowboys and Eagles. Have a pretty good record, like it's pretty respectable. Four and five, not great, but it's better than I thought they were going to be. Realistic, yeah. And hey, if we're going to go all the way back to the start of the season and our predictions episode, which is probably realistically only like four episodes ago because we do such a great job at recording, but if we go back, I do say that I was a little bit higher on Sam Howell, so I can't, I, I don't want to just be like, yo, I, I don't, think, it, I don't think you were second in passing yards. Miles. I wasn't that. Yeah, you're right. I wasn't that high on him, but I, yeah, but I'm glad to see him doing good. Um, but uh, I mean, Washington's winning games. The NFC is not that great. I, it's still very, very slim for them to make the playoffs. Like, but I mean, nothing's impossible. So you never know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah, this next game, we don't need to talk about. We'll move on to the next one. No, oh, you got to talk about it. You, <laughs> you right. got to talk. I'll let, you, I'll let you have center stage here. All right. And uh, I won't the say Colts, too much. Colts and the lot. Panthers. Panthers coming off of their, their win against the Texans. So let's try to ride this momentum. 
Well, that didn't happen. Uh, the Colts won 27-13. Bryce threw two pick sixes. Um, but I don't fault Bryce. I mean, obviously, a little bit of the fault has to go on him. You can't say he's completely not to blame. But the media is so funny, okay? all The whole beginning of the year, they're like, oh, dude, Bryce sucks. He was shouldn't have taken him. He, CJ's better, blah, 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 whatever. We play last week. Bryce beats CJ. Bryce plays great. The media totally flips. And, oh, Bryce is so good. This is why he was picked one. Panthers knew what they were doing, blah, 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 all this. Now Bryce does terrible again. Oh, dude, he sucks. What a bad pick, blah, 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 blah. It's a rookie quarterback. Yes, CJ Stroud looks great right now. But no rookie quarterbacks ever look that good in their first year. I, uh, I sent Austin a separate clip yesterday because we were having a little bit of an argument about it uh <laughs> a little bit of an argument about it that lasted a good uh hour um but there's a multiple pictures of bryce where he's getting the ball and maybe a half like a second and a half after the ball snap all four or five guys on the d line are right in his face all of the receivers are not even like five yards downfield because we have no receivers and they get no separation and nobody can get separation in like two seconds. So Bryce is getting hurried every play. He's not getting sacked all the time because he's just throwing the ball away, but you obviously can't do anything about that. And then sometimes you got to afford to just try something. So you throw a quick pass and get to pick six. So yes, it is on Bryce a little bit, but Bryce has the worst team around him and it is so bad. Our defense isn't good. Everybody's hurt. Uh, our offensive line is a joke. Our receivers are a joke. Our coach is a joke. This season needs to end. Good thing it's it's college basketball season now. I'm rock, if you can't tell, I'm rocking the uh, the Baylor basketball jersey because the season started yesterday and Baylor plays tonight. So thankfully that can distract me a little bit from the misery of the Panthers. So unfortunately, I have to watch their their game on Thursday night in front of national on in front of them like entire america so they get to see us lose to the bears which is very sad so i'm ready for dj Moore to have his revenge game and go for 450 yards on us while all our receivers can't get two yards on the field because we get sacked so it's gonna be great i'm i'm everything's totally great right now for the panthers on the bright side you're only one game behind the patriots and if you were to tell that from someone who just showed up from five years ago, they would think that you're doing really great. So at least have that. Oh, great. That's 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 all I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> all right, enough of that game. We don't need to talk about that. Yeah. All right. Um, here we have the Josh McDaniels Bowl. Um, call it that. Josh McDaniels is fired. And, you know, normally... When the coach gets fired and the whole coaching staff, like everything just kind of, your coach gets fired, your GM gets fired. It's like the players, most of the time, like the media can say what they want. And most of the time, the players will be like, hey, like, that, that's my coach, though. You can kind of stick up for me. Apparently, that's not the case for the Raiders. Apparently, um, the Raiders have thrown like some parties when Josh McDaniels was fired. Kind of funny to me. They ended up beating the Giants 30 to 6, which um the Raiders scored more points in the first half than they had in any game all year. So great work, Josh McDaniels. Now you were playing the Giants, but we ignore that for the sake of it's hilarious. Um, like I said, Raiders seem to be pretty thrilled that they're not under that regime anymore. So kind of tough. Yeah. They they played really good, and there's a video that came out of them in the locker room post game, and they all have like victory cigars and are going crazy, and it looks like the the Raiders. I mean, they're probably not going to make the playoffs, but they look like a real team now that McDaniel's is gone. So the Giants, on the other again, hand, again they were playing the Giants. That's so. true. Giants may be them and the Cardinals may be the two worst teams right now in football, especially now that the Giants. Uh, Daniel Jones tore his ACL in this game, so Danny DeVito had to go play quarterback for them the rest of the game. <laughs> Tommy <laughs> DeVito, but it's pretty close. Danny DeVito played quarterback for the Giants, and they put up a whopping six points, and the rest of the season for the Giants is just miserable. 
I don't know why you even paid Daniel Jones at all, let alone forty million dollars a year. But sorry, Giants fans, you guys are in shambles. Danny DeVito. Yeah, I think for the rest of the year, everyone on the Raiders is happy, except for Devontae Adams. Mm. Nah, he um, seemed okay. They showed him, and he was hooping in the uh, locker room, and he's like. Uh, yeah, I think that something. he'd rather be out winning championships right now. And I don't know if you saw, but the trade deadline was the other week, obviously. And the Jets had made an offer for him, which would have been pretty wild, bringing him back with Aaron Rodgers. So. Could you imagine if Aaron Rodgers uh, like was healthy and he had his wide receivers as Garrett Wilson and Devontae Adams? They'd be destroying the league right now. I mean, look, man, mm-hmm. I, this is a little off topic because I mean, we're not on the Jets right now, but the Jets... Like, I'm impressed. Like, their no defense is so good, dude. Their, their defense, defense is so is good. Doing really phenomenal. And Zach Wilson is doing just enough, to not losing nah. games despite his best efforts. He's really trying, but he tried really. last night. We'll get to that in like three games, but yeah. All right. Um. Here we have one of the games of all time. Uh. The Eagles and Cowboys. Um, I say one of the games of all time because it was really apparent to me that neither of these teams really wanted to win this game. They really wanted to give it to the other guys. Like, no, please, we want you to win. They're like, no, no, please, you can have it. Um, really good game up until the last drive. The last drive, the Cowboys were down by, I want to say like four. They're not. Right? Five. Five. Yeah, they're down by five. Um, and they're like, all right, end of the game. We have like two minutes left. Gotta get, gotta get down the field. Here we go. So they go, and then the drive stalls, and they punt. I didn't know they they turn it over. They have to. They're going for it. They go for it. They turn it all over. It's like, ah, well, that's the game, you know. But then the Eagles, fair enough. They run the ball like. Three times in a row because you're just trying to run the clock out. If you get a first down, it's game over. They end up not doing that. Um, their drive stalls, and so there's like 40 seconds left in the game. I think it was actually like 57 seconds left in the game. Cowboys get the ball at like their own 20. All right. You got to go 80 yards to win this game in 40 seconds. And then just like that, they are all the way down the field because the Eagles could not stop committing penalties. Like, oh, there's a pass interference here. There's a roughing the passer there. There's another pass interference here. It's like they did everything they could. And then there's encroachment. So it's like all of a sudden the Cowboys are down on the 11 yard line and they still have 30 seconds left. You're like, whoa. They just went like 80 yards in 10 seconds. Kind of wild. And then the Cowboys were like, oh, we feel kind of bad because like we didn't really deserve those penalties, guys. I'm sorry. And so then they, took a sack and then they took a false start and then they're all the way back 30 yards away from the end zone and you're like whoa you were like literally just right there how did you end up 30 yards away again and then uh last play of the game Dak Prescott decides to throw the ball not in the end zone he decides to throw it like four yards short of the end zone for a CD lamb and proceeded to fumble the ball but it didn't matter because he was short so that was great both teams really didn't want to win that game but the Eagles ended up victorious, improving to maintain the best record in the NFL. They are now eight and one. The Cowboys fall two five. So that was impeccable storytelling. So I enjoyed that. Good job. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, we'll move to the Sunday night game. Uh, Cincinnati going up against the Bills, and Cincinnati looks like they're back to themselves. Uh, they. They kind of cruised in this game from start to finish. It got a little close at the end, but the Bills ultimately lost the game. The Bills are struggling, and you said it at the very beginning that right now it looks like Miami is going to easily win that division, and I agree. The Bills are bad. Josh Allen keeps throwing interceptions. Um, I don't know what's going on, but this was the – and the like the – the same exact game as the DeMar Hamlin thing. So he didn't play because he sucks at football. So he he was inactive for this game. But so everyone was making a big deal of that. And but yeah, I don't know. 
Bills, Bills, I don't know how to explain what's going on with them. They don't make sense, but the Bengals are back to their elite selves. Yeah, the Bills are not the same team that they were last year or the year before. Like, in my mind, like, I still kind of think of them as like, oh, they're like on par with the Chiefs and the Bengals. Like, I don't know why that's still in my mind because it's just clearly not true. They're not the same team. Josh Allen has thrown nine picks in nine games, um, which, you know, doing his best back press got impression out here. Um, so he's not taking care of the football. Bills just aren't winning games. And the Bengals, after starting, what, 0-3, uh, went ahead and are now 5-3. and They've won five in a row because Bengals. Um, and I don't know why anyone was worried. I really don't like I don't know. 0-3 for the Bengals just seems par for the course and then just go ahead and win out the rest of the year. So kind of ridiculous. Not super happy about it. But Bengals are back, looking like their old selves, looking like Super Bowl contenders. Again, pretty annoying, but it is what it is. Can't change that. Mm-hmm. All right, and then the last game of Monday night, the Chargers and the Jets. And the Chargers just mauled the Jets. I don't really know how much to say. Go for it. I, I mean, I wouldn't really say mauled. Like, this game was a lot closer than 27 to 6, if I'm being completely honest here. Like, no one, like, I don't know how they scored 27 points. I really don't. <laughs> I, I was, I, they got a punt return for their first they touchdown. They got a punt return for a touchdown, and like, that's Eckler, kind of the most notable thing they did all day. Yeah, Eckler had like two very short touchdowns and then a bunch of field goals I mean, for each team. Yeah, Justin Herbert, 136 yards passing. Austin Eckler, the rusher. Good. That was not that Austin is Eckler, not leading good. rusher, 47 yards rushing. Um, like it's really just a really bad day for the Chargers, but they somehow managed to win by 11 points. Or, I don't know, uh, 21 points. Um, Zach Wilson did actually like not the worst. I mean, he threw for 263 yards and 33 for 49. Like that's like a good stat line, but his team just like didn't do anything. Their rushing attack was non-existent. Um, Again, like this game was a lot closer than 27 to 6, if we're being completely honest here. But at the end of the day, they did win by 21. So you have that going for you. Um, Jets, probably not going to make the playoffs. Like, unless they somehow find some rhythm, I don't know where they're going to find it from. Um, but they're going to have to win like most of their games from here on out. The Bills are going to have to completely fall off the radar, and maybe they could squeak it. But at this point, it's not looking very likely, but I think they're doing better than most people would have expected. Um, the Chargers improve to a 500 record. Up until now, every team other than the Chiefs had a losing record in the AFC West. So that's kind of awesome. So good job, Chargers. You're currently in second place in the AFC West. Not a very accomplished task, but go crazy, I guess. Yeah. Kind of a weird division because normally you'd think it's the Chiefs and Chargers in a tight battle, but the Chargers have struggled this year. It's weird. But yeah, that's all for this week. Um, anything you want to say before we go and disappear for about two months until next episode? Oh no 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 no! no we're we're getting another one out. I'm just trust. kidding. I know. I'm just joking. Trust. We're getting another one out. We're we're trusting this time. Um. Anything else to say? Um, shout out to my fantasy players for barely letting me win this week. Really appreciate you guys. You don't know who you are. And um, Michael Thomas, you need to step up. Michael Thomas, where's your point? Yeah, because he's got Derek Carr as his quarterback. We said he sucks. Yeah. Stay Good tuned for the big Thursday night game this week. You guys won't want to miss that one. You're going to want to miss it. Make plans. <laughs> make plans for Thursday night. I'm trying to make it. plans for Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> make plans to not watch the game. So. Yep. All right. Thank you guys for watching this episode of k Football. Hopefully, we're back for good now, and we're going to hopefully see you guys next Monday or Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this episode of k Football. You can listen to our podcast wherever you get your podcasts, and we're also active on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts.
If you made it this far in the video, thank you. You're a real one. We'll see you next time.